This is the Asus ROG Strix Z690A Gaming Wi-Fi D4 and a bunch of other words. Ignoring the name that resembles what would happen if you hit the keyboard with your face after looking at 3090 prices, it is one beefy boy built for beefy PCs. But before we get to build our own beefy PC using this, we wanted to make a brief overview in case anybody out there is stuck deciding on what one about to go for. So this is Asus's ATX sized ROG Strix Z6, nah, I, I won't do that again. As you might expect considering you didn't make a typo on the Z690 part, this definitely white styled aluminum themed board comes with the latest and greatest LGA 1700 socket for those fancy schmancy new 12th gen Intel CPUs. As usual with these 12th gen chips there are boards made for DDR5 and those for DDR4s. The model we are looking at today is a DDR4 model with 4 DIMMs at max 128GB running in dual channel mode and supporting up to 5333 MHz of non-ECC Google Chrome appetizer. On the power end, Asus went with a 16 plus 1 design powered by a dual 8 pin power delivery and a ridiculously oversized VRM heatsink featuring a whole bunch of Strix and ROG branding cuts, edges and RGB and why the hell do I need that but I, it's, it's there. The rest of the board isn't bare bones either. Quite a big chunk of it is also covered in the same styled aluminum heatsink with ROG branding all over the place as well as this velcro strap which... Why? <laughs> I see it like with those chains that people used to wear around their pants like they did not have any purpose. But unlike those chains uh, or, or the strap, all of the aluminum spread across the board does have a purpose. It has the purpose to keep the components to which we will get in a minute underneath cool. On the PCIe slot side we are looking at a 5.0 x16, a 3.0 x16 and a 3.0 x1 slot. Although you might think that this is quite sparse compared to what other manufacturers or even models are plastering over their boards, let's be realistic. Multi-GPU is dead and how many 10 gig network cards do you actually need? In the end, I do believe that this is sufficient for a consumer board. However, all of these PCIe lanes have to go somewhere and this somewhere is also the main reason why I sold my soul for this board. With a total of 4 M.2 slots, this thing can pack a ton of data. After removing every heatsink present on the board, we will be greeted with all of these beautiful little data orders. The top and bottom left M.2 port allows to be used with drives up to 110mm long, while the central and lower right one allow for up to 80mm long drives. Although all of these uh, ports are supporting PCIe 4.0 x3 mode, only the top one called M.2 underscore 1, this slot is connected directly to the CPU while the other ones are going through the chipset. One thing to note though, the lower right M.2 slot is also the one that is able to operate in SATA mode. Because yeah, these drives still exist, I, I don't know why. If that is the case, the right bottom port of the SATA 6 ports on the right side will stop working. And while we're at it, Let's go over the onboard connections. In total, we are looking at one USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2, one USB 3.2 Gen 1, and two USB 2.0 headers. Then to cover the rest, we've got the usual front panel, audio, and Thunderbolt headers. For fans, this thing is really packed. In the very top, we will find two headers meant for the CPU. Underneath the socket, we will find another two, one meant for the case fans, and the other one for AIOs and pumps. And then we've got another four case fan headers, one next to the SATA ports and three spread across the bottom of the board. So in total we are looking at eight PVM headers which is significantly more than I am actually used to. And can we just admire for a second that instead of the usually obnoxious fan header underneath the IO panel, Asus decided to put it right underneath the socket. Like a place where it makes sense, a place where it might actually be useful. For fancy spancy lights, we've got a total of three addressable RGB headers, two in the very bottom and one in the top right corner. 
Right next to it, we will find the only 4 pin RGB header next to the CPU, RAM, GPU, and boot control light. To finish off the input section, let's go over the IO. In the back of the board, we've got one USB 3.2 Gen 2 x 2 Type C, three USB 3.2 Gen 2, two of which are Type A, one Type C, and four USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A, and two USB 2.0 and no, fuck, almost, and two USB 2.0 Type A. Damn! Then we've got a display and HDMI port in case you are planning to use the iGPU. In the bottom we will then also find 5 audio jacks for the onboard ROG Supreme FX audio chip. For networking we've got the mandatory 2.5 gig Ethernet port that is now basically mandatory on every Z690 board. And additionally, as this is the Wi-Fi version of the board, we will also have two Wi-Fi 6 antennas included in the box. Now, before I end this, honorable mentions because there are quite a few here. First off, we got a clear CMOS and BIOS slash button in combination with the USB 2.0 port above it in the back. Comes in really handy if you are messing stuff up. Then we've got the ROG reusable cable organizer. Yes, this thing has a purpose. And no, I will never ever route my cable through it. it, it would look hideous. To make my life incredibly easier, the holes around the CPU sockets are not only present for an LGA1700 socket. Instead, Asus made sure to also add the older LGA1200 socket holes, which means that I or you will be able to repurpose an older cooler without calling and sending emails all across the world to get those damn replacement brackets. It's, it's really great. And the last and probably biggest jump in motherboard technology for the last decade this quick GPU release button. What this thing does is it unhooks the PCIe block. That's it's all. We've all been building PCs for many years now. We've all hit many boards with our screwdrivers because those cars are getting thicker and thicker. Yet nobody, until now, decided that we need this. This needs to become a standard. On every board, every manufacturer, please, please put this into the PCIe 6 standard. Make it a subsection, I don't care. Just make it happen. I don't, never want to have a board without this. Anyway, all in all, it's a beast of a board. Connection-wise, it's insane. And the heatsink is just beautiful. Maybe a bit too much, but it's beautiful. The price is not beautiful. <laughs> At around $380 on Amazon US, this thing is heavy. Sure, Z690 boards in general are pretty expensive, but close to 400 bucks is... Whew, that, that hurts. It's, it's almost a 12700K in that. Ooh. But yeah, finally I got my hands on the board and so far I got a 12700K, a beautiful board, and now all I'm waiting for is an opportunity to get my hands on a 3090 and I am ready to build my new editing rig. I, I've been waiting for a bit too long now. Okay, but this should sum it up for the Asus ROG Strix Z690 A Gaming Wi-Fi D4. I, I swear this was the last time for me now. We need to implement some sort of, of shortcuts for these. Anyway, I hope you found what you were looking for in this overview, but if you want to keep watching and you are looking for a more affordable alternative, have a look at ASRock's Z690 PG Riptide. That's an easy name. That's, yeah, PG Riptide. Easy. And we now have a Discord server, so if you want to join and talk a bit, I will leave the links in the description below. Anyway, I hope to see you in the next one, and bye-bye.